We used to do crazy stuff. We'd crawl through the ceilings to get into different people's offices and stuff. Because Image was next to Extreme when I was working with Rob. And so we'd, we'd crawl through the ceiling and go look around the Image office. Hawkins, take one, a mark. Matt Hawkins, you've got a ton of stuff happening right now. Uh, aside from helping to run Top Cow Comics, you're also <laughs> writing or co-writing three series right now. Yeah. Think Tank, Warframe, Yeah. Your Swing. Swing with my wife, yeah. Four, actually, because yeah. I almost forgot. Cyber oh, Force. Kind of, by the way, you're co-writing Cyber Force with right. Mark Silvestri. And Brian, yeah. Which one do we want to start with first? Cyber Force? Cyber Force works. Okay, how did that come about, um, you and Mark teaming up on it? Well, he, uh, with the 25th anniversary of the company, I've only been at Top Cow for 20 years, so I actually <laughs> celebrated my 20th uh, next month with uh, Top Cow. And uh, we wanted to do something big with Cyberforce for the 25th anniversary, so we started working on it. And of course, you know, it's Image, so it took an extra year. So we're actually launching it with the 26th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. But at least we didn't solicit it first, so we actually <laughs> waited, we got a bunch of issues done, and uh, real excited about it. I've, I've always been obsessed with uh, transhumanism, and one of my weird uh, background things. I have a master's in physics. I was studying to go into the military industrial complex and image launched right while I was in grad school and then I just went into comics and never looked back. So a lot of the stuff I write. That's incredible. Has, but it's just kind of a weird, you know, my dad was an engineer for the military, my sister's an astrophysicist, so I was just following the family and now I'm the black sheep of the family. You know? but <laughs> You're the wasting book, your gifts. <laughs> the book makes perfect sense then for, right. for, for, for your background. You've yeah. never, you never worked in any of the cyber force uh, series before. No. No, right? I, well the one that just came out in 2011, I, I assisted Mark. He wrote that, but I, right. I story edited him. So I was involved in that and I wrote Aphrodite 9, which is a central part of mm -hmm. the uh, the series that we're doing now. So I, I've, I've definitely written a lot in the Top Cow quote unquote universe. So I know those characters well. What's it like uh, co-writing a book with somebody, especially the creator of, of, the, of the characters? Uh, it can be it can be tough, tough. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, it, it depends on, on different collaborators work in different ways. You know, for me, uh, I, I tend to do a lot up front. I'm, I'm a, a, definitely a heavy outliner. I, I'm, I'm a heavy planner when it comes to writing. Uh, Mark is a little more freewheeling, you know, so he doesn't necessarily, in terms of our writing styles, kind of conflict a little bit. So, but we've sort of worked that out. We've, we figure out how to do it and we have different steps. We've worked uh, together for long enough now that we've, we've worked through those issues. <laughs> Let's talk about Warframe. Cool. Tell us about that, what it's about, and okay. you know what inspired the, the story. Warframe is based on a video game. Uh, Digital Extremes has a video game called Warframe. Uh, they were familiar with my work. Uh, they had done the second Darkness video game that we produced for 2K Games. that came out in 2012. So I knew those guys really well. And I actually wrote a comic for a game they made called Dark Sector years and years ago. So uh, he came to us and said, we have this game with 20 million players. We want to do a comic to kind of flesh out the uh, universe. Would you be willing to write it? So um, I agreed to do it. And I looked at my schedule and realized I didn't have enough time to go spend 1,000 hours playing some MMO game. So I brought Ryan Katie on, who's you know 25 and got plenty of time to lose. And so I'm like, you go play 1,000 hours on this video game. Because that's the research you have to do to, to write a book yeah. based on a game. So he, did a, he played the game, and then we worked on it together. And, uh, and it, it approved with them, but uh, You're it's a game guy. You're the game guy. Ryan is right. a game guy. But it's okay. essentially space ninjas. That's what uh, Warframe is. Think Tank is another book that kind of plays to your yeah. to, to your transhumanist uh, interests. Yes. Uh, Tell us about the concept behind this. Uh, Think Tank is about a scientist who develops weapons for DARPA. He's been doing it since he was 14. He was recruited at a very young age. One thing I discovered when I started doing research on DARPA and some of the physics and people that work in these fields is a lot of them are recruited very young. You know how Shaquille was recruited? Shaquille O'Neal was recruited like when he was nine to go to college and do this whole thing. Sure. Uh, they do the same thing with these kids. They find these sort of really young kids that have skipped a couple grades that are winning sort, you know, science fairs. The, the Air Force especially will go out and send people out to investigate these kids and interest them to try to entice them to join Sandia Labs or, or one of these various places they, they uh, work with. So these kids get locked down. What, they, what a lot of them don't realize is when they sign these uh, contracts, that a lot of them don't realize they're essentially signing life contracts, you know. Because these guys, a lot of the, the research scientists, like even if you look at the, uh, the Manhattan Projects and the people after that, those people were no longer allowed to travel uh, without like uh, Secret Service. You know, so you, they knew everything, you know? It's interesting hearing how you almost went into the military industrial complex, as you put it, uh, coming out of college before you detoured into comics through right. Image. Uh, you seem, you, you, stories like this seem to have a little bit of a uh, healthy distrust. Yes. Of, of the MIC. Yes. 
that absolutely is the case. I, I've seen it peripherally for so long, and, and uh, I just have friends, most of the guys I knew in college uh, are all in that. And they don't, you know, a lot of them have top secret, they don't tell me what they're doing, but I, I go visit them sometimes and I hear some of the shit they have to deal with, and it is, it is kind of mind-boggling. The dark side of technology, too, is another theme here. Um, that is endlessly fascinating, especially as we continue to move into such a technological age. Right. For, for you, how much fun is it to do the research and, and dive in to find some of the realistic things right. that you then kind of put into the story and kind of, you know. I love it. In fact, in everything. Touch up a little bit. Yeah, everything taking volume in the back, I include what's called a science class, where I actually list out all the technologies, all the weapon systems, and links to YouTube videos and, and some things. The, with the Freedom of Information Act, the government often will dump uh, information they're supposed to release, but they'll dump it on like 100 468 you know, 10. 10 tildes XYZ mm -hmm. dot gov, you know, just to dump it so they're meeting the legal requirement. But there's a few message boards that once you kind of are linked in, you can look. I look at it and they link those things around, so I'm able to track wow. that stuff. Wow, no wonder you don't have time for games. You're too yeah. busy <laughs> digging into the dark corners <laughs> of the web. Well, and that stuff, you, you pour through this stuff, and there's, you know, sometimes thousands of pages in these PDFs, and it's hours just going through, and you come across two sentences that spin your mind, and that's my next idea. You know, and I'm just like, oh, shit, you know, and then kind of roll with that. So. You know, you're, you're 20 years into your run at Top Cow. Uh, Top Cow's a fascinating place because, and we talked about this when we did the, the, the image documentary, it, it, it was probably the dark horse out of the, the studios, mm -hmm. but it's had an immense amount of success across all platforms, right. especially games, yep. which is something, even though you don't play them anymore, right. you have your game guy to do it, yep. you guys still do the multi-platform thing. Right. How, how challenging is it to switch from writing a graphic novel to then switching to, to putting together a game script? Oh, it's, uh, it's completely different. And, and a lot of times on the, on the other licensing stuff, like on the games, we're not working as creatively. We're more kind of executives on it with other people that are in those fields. Uh, and that's right brain, left brain shit, which spins my head sometimes. You know, <laughs> just uh, the way I, I bifurcate my day is I, AM, I work creatively. PM, I work business. I've always done that. So I write from f like four to seven in the morning. I'll go to work, hit the gym, and then I'll write for a couple more hours, and then I'll get into the business after lunch. And you're, you stick to that, every day. That, that routine? It works every day. Impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. Give me three comics that Matt Hawkins is reading now. Oh, you know, I just started reading DMZ, an old uh, Vertigo book, which uh, is quite good. I'd heard about it for decades and just never picked it up, so I, I bought the Omnibus and have been reading through that. Um, I really like what Zach Kaplan is doing on a book called Port of Earth, which I'm actually publishing. might seem a little self-promotional, uh, self but I just really like it. it it's a... Uh, it's essentially the pitch that he gave me when he pitched it to me was, uh, what if aliens come to us, but not like with, like they're going to take us over, but like with a business deal, you know? And, and, uh, and I, then we started looking at that in allegories to like the Native Americans, how the Europeans came over and then they fucked them all, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, uh, so we're kind of playing with that idea with that story and I really like it. So I'm really a fan of what he's doing. And uh, my buddy Brian Hill's writing a book for DC called Michael Cray and I think he's doing a really good job with it. I love that book actually. You were, you were there since the beginning of Image. Yeah. You worked for Extreme Studios. You worked with, with, with Rob Liefeld. Give me a Rob Liefeld story that nobody's heard. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, no, Rob, uh, yeah, you know, I, this has probably been heard somewhere, but he used to want to go to Taco Bell every day. Every day. <laughs> like, uh, I don't remember what it was. There was like some sort He's of... He's never been overweight a day in his life. Uh, well, he lifts, and so, but I think he would go because they had some sort of special... I don't remember what it was, but we, I, for, for years it was Dan Fraga, me, uh, Rob, Eric Stevenson, and a guy named Larry Martyr, who was uh, one sure. of the founders, uh, one of the original image publishers, and we'd all go to Taco Bell drive through like four times a week. It was really annoying. I hate fucking Taco Bell now. <laughs> I mean, I can't Good eat Lord, there. man. <laughs> we ate there. Were you trying to show your life? Man? You can't eat a Taco Bell every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was just let's go, you know. And like, uh, no, the early image days were were a lot of fun, you know. And part of the reason why I see the crazy thing about my origin story when I talk about everyone always wonder how did you get into comics? I'm like, well, I kind of I lucked into it. Really, I didn't read comics at all. And uh, I was more of a sci-fi guy. And uh, so my nephew wanted to go meet Rob Liefeld. I didn't know who Rob was. And I just happened to take him to that signing. And the three guys in front of me uh, are all artists in comics now. And they, for two hours while I waited in this line, they were telling me what Image Comics was and all this stuff and who these guys were. And we got up and Rob hired all three of them on the spot. They all work still in comics now. And so I was Get just out, the next really? guy. You know, and I'm just this guy. I was, I was working in the lab 30 weeks. I was working at a bank to pay my way through school. I, I was in school another 30 hours a week. My life sucked, you know, except for the few hours I was hanging out at the training house. But, you know, so I walked up and here's these guys, like 20 young guys. And they got like 20 really good looking young girls. And I'm like, 
shit, I want to work there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just asked Rob as I got to the next guy in line. I said, oh, I don't, I'm not an artist or anything, but you're looking for anyone else? He's like, we need somebody to write press releases. I'm like, oh, I've done that. I've never done that. I, but I went and bought a book on how to write a press release and wrote a press release about that event. Fax told me, hired me the next day. <laughs> That's incredible. So crazy story. That's 20, 25 years ago and 25 years ago this month. Matt, so, thanks so much for talking yeah. with us. Thank you. <laughs> that was a great yeah, story. Crazy.